So, uh, first of all, uh, initially my talk was named actually Introduction into Benchmarking. And then starting to work on this, I realized that we, okay, it should be more general. So it should be about performance testing and benchmarking. And what is the difference? Uh, so, well, <laughs> taking this uh, phrasing from uh, Wikipedia, we can see that uh, performance testing is, mo is, is mostly about uh, actually text, uh, testing of um, software to uh, see that how it uh, works uh, in uh, terms of responsive responsiveness and uh, stability under some load. At the same time, we are interested in to get some metrics about scalability, reliability, reliability and uh, resources usages. At the same time, benchmark uh, is more about like a, to run a computer program uh, again, um, or kind of set of some operations um, in order to assess like a relative performance. Uh, then we probably, we, when we run a number of standard tests or some trials against that. So in general, actually in Beam, we have both. Uh, so we will see how it works. But at the same time, we wanted uh, to see actually why we need the performance testing in Beam. Uh, kind of obvious answer, but anyway. Uh, first of all, uh, we wanted to measure a performance um, of different runners uh, and detect probably performance degradation in case if uh, some feature was introduced or maybe some bugs. Uh, we can measure it uh, between Beam releases or run, run it periodically. Uh, also, we want to actually to test uh, how Beam pipelines uh, works under the load. We have a very, our actually Beam code is very, very well covered with a bunch of different unit tests and other tests. But at the same time, usually it's just a very teeny amount of data. So, but we want to see how it works under the load. Uh, also, we want to compare the performance of different runners and or maybe a different SDK in the Beam. And the quite, I would say, sensible topic. <laughs> so to see the performance, uh, compare performance between Beam runners and uh, maybe native engines. Okay, so actually we have a uh, four, I would say, uh, different blocks or different uh, entities that we uh, have in Beam to run performance testing or be benchmarking. So first of all, sorry, it's a IO transform integration test. Uh, the second one is a core Beam operation tests. Third one is a Nextmark uh, bench benchmark suite. And the last one is a TPCDS suite. It's also a benchmark. So uh, we will talk about every of this uh, in, in details. Let's start from uh, IO integration um, tests. OK, what is it? Actually, uh, I would call it like a, a two in one. So <laughs> uh, we run in integration tests. But uh, we use a kind of uh, larger amount of data against them. And in this case, we can run them as a um, performance test. So uh, initially, it was intended like, uh, to be uh, uh, implemented for every I.O. connector that we have in Beam. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's not the case. Uh, but it's pretty well covered, so it should be OK. Uh, it works only in batch mode. Uh, it's a disadvantage, but still, if we want to run it against uh, unbounded sources, we should run it. Uh, we should run it as a bounded so source. Uh, so sw switch it and uh, run it as a bounded source with a, a limited amount of input data. So this is a, a limitation. Uh, for now, it's implemented only for Java SDK. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, so it's a uh, room for improvement. <laughs> uh, only if all, actually all runners that uh, support Java SDK can run all these tests, so it's not a problem. And we can run it manually or on Jenkins. And at the same time, we have integration with uh, Grafana dashboards for that. So pretty typical scenario how to do that. Uh, we can 
say like uh, in two words that we have a two type of pipelines for that. First of uh, all, well, it's a write pipeline where we deterministically actually generate number of records and then we uh, write them uh, with the IO write transfer into empty sync of our data source. And then we collect some write metrics. After we run our read pipeline, that actually with a read transform, read all this data from the source, count number of records to compare that everything is okay. And also we, collect, uh, we generate a hash depending on input data. Also to compare that we don't have any data corruption or data loss. And finally, we collect read metrics for that. So unfortunately, we don't have too, too much metrics, uh, only uh, write time uh, and read time, but still we keep them uh, all in a metrics database. And finally, we can uh, use it uh, to show on our dashboards. So this example of Parkit.io, uh, we can see that it's a bit fluctuated because of unknown reason. <laughs> uh, well, pros and cons actually, what is good and what is bad for that with this approach? Of course, the good thing is that uh, we leverage the same code. We don't need to, to write another code to run a performance test for that. So uh, the second one uh, is uh, that actually it's quite easy to implement for a new uh, IO connector. So mm, pretty straightforward actually code and approach how to do that. Uh, and we can run it against either real mm, backend or running in, in, in a Kubernetes. This is what we actually do on, on Jenkins. Uh, disadvantages. So as I mentioned, it's, in, it's in implemented only for Java SDK. Uh, we have only a few metrics and uh, we are limited by number of uh, input records because actually this N depends on hash because to, to compare since it's integration test. And uh, we pre-calculated this uh, hash for limited number of N input records. But of course, it's possible to run it without this uh, asset if needed. The next type of test that we have, it's a uh, or beam operations or test that was added not so long time ago, actually. Uh, this is a goal of this actually to test the performance for core beam operations. As we already uh, know, this is part two and uh, side input, group by key, core group by key and combine. Uh, for doing that, it uses, as it's called, a synthetic source and synthetic st step. We'll talk a little bit later uh, in more details what actually they are. Uh, it supports two modes, batch and streaming. Good news. Uh, different SDK support it. So actually most of that SDKs that we have in Beam except uh, experimental one. So Java, Python, and Go. Uh, runners, for cur uh, cur currently we run it against Dataflow, Spark, uh, and Flint runners. But uh, pretty sure that we can run it with, uh, in, uh, against other runners as well. Uh, Again, we run it on Jenkins, and we have a Grafana dashboard integration. So currently, what actually is a synthetic source instead? Uh, synthetic source is a very high, actually, configurable um, transform that is supposed to uh, kind of provide deterministic data. Uh, and uh, so it's a kind of key collection of uh, key value of bytes. Uh, it's, as I mentioned, highly configurable with different types of configuration options like a seed, uh, kit value size, hotkeys, and so on. So it means that uh, based on this, we can create a mm, good number of different load tests. Uh, and synthetic step, it's a transform that uh, actually can accept this peak collection of key values, do some operations with them, uh, also very highly configurable, uh, and then just output it. So uh, again, it's possible to combine all the configuration options in different way and to have a bunch of different tests for that. And we can run it in iterations and with a fan out. So 
Uh, generic metrics for this test, uh, it's, uh, well, currently we kind of collect uh, uh, different type of metrics. That's usually what we uh, needed, like uh, how much time it will to run, consume, uh, amount of consumed bytes, and so on. And uh, just to give you some example, what actually this, how this test can look like, uh, let's take a par do low test for Java SDK. <laughs> yeah, I'm off familiar with, with Java SDK, so. <laughs> uh, uh, so, as you can see, it's also pretty straightforward. Uh, in the beginning, we, with a synthetic source, uh, we generate uh, our P collection of key values for bounded or unbounded source. Uh, then we run uh, monitors to collect, to start to uh, collect uh, metrics. And finally, depending on number, if, the, if, if iterations, to run this part due, uh, we actually uh, execute this part due. It's called the counter operation, which is pretty sexually similar. It just uh, increments some counters and that's it. And finally, in the end, we collect, we just, again, collect all metrics. So, and then store them in a database, in a metrics database, to use them for analysis later. Uh, again, so example of uh, what's, uh, how it can look like. So for example, here we run uh, this test uh, of uh, for Java SDK uh, of uh, two gigabytes input and uh, pr for pretty small records uh, on uh, different runners. It's uh, several versions of Dataflow and on a Spark runner, uh, a new version of Spark Runner that is based on a data set API. So as you can see, that behavior for the same test on different runners and or with the same configuration options can be different. So on Spark Runner, it's more fluctuated. Uh, but again, it's pretty convenient to compare in graphical way. Uh, next mark, uh, famous uh, benchmark that we, we have in Beam since uh, for a long time, actually. Uh, what is a benchmark in two words? This is a, a kind of suite of pipelines uh, to run continuous uh, data stream of queries. And it was inspired by Nextmark uh, paper. Uh, and uh, there are actually three main entities that is used. This is a it's, it, it's, about, uh, it's about auction. So we kind of persons that uh, do auction, then can, well, they do kind of bids, they put some uh, things for auction and other persons can buy it. Uh, and with that, uh, there are several queries. For example, one of the query can be like, uh, what is the average selling price for each auction? So, uh, and uh, all these queries is used there to run uh, continuously. Uh, now we have uh, 15 queries, like uh, nine main queries and uh, six additional queries uh, to, to run it against uh, different actually sources and uh, on, a, on a different runners. Uh, poop, 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 poop. This is a next mark thing that uh, actually we run for a long time. It uh, helped us really to find uh, re regressions, some issues. Uh, so it's kind of, we can consider it's mature benchmark and proven that it can be effective for us. And then, uh, unfortunately, we don't run it on a kind of real big scale, on a real big scale. Uh, it's not industry standard, uh, and, um, and that is why actually we cannot uh, kind of compare the results with other systems on that. Uh, but at the same time, so the good thing is that it supports batch and streaming, uh, implemented unfortunately only, only for Java SDK, but uh, in a SQL and non-SQL way. So we run it again on a data flow runner, on a Spark runner, and Flink runner. And as I mentioned, it's heavily used to detect a performance uh, regression, if any. 
And uh, it's very highly configurable. So a bunch of different options to configure. This is just example of the default configuration option. So number of events, uh, threads, and uh, uh, rate of this uh, mess events. Uh, the, uh, we, we can configure, for example, for unbounded sources, the um, size of windows, uh, proportions, many things. So again, it's a uh, and if it was developed for a long time, people added new features, improved a very good way. So it, this is just example of the output of this uh, benchmark. So uh, uh, all the queries, how much it takes to run, number of uh, uh, events that happen for this query, and uh, number of results. Of course, we, uh, we store uh, all metrics in our uh, metrics database. Mm when we run it uh, automatically on Jenkins. So, and finally, for example, for every query, we, we can compare the behavior. For example, in this case, we can see that for Spark Runner, we have a two versions actually of Spark Runner based old, old version kind of based on RDD and the new version based on the data set API. And we, then we can easily compare behavior for the same query. And finally, uh, this is a, kind of new thing that we have in Beam. It's called the TPCD DS benchmark. Uh, this is a decision supports uh, benchmark that actually models some business operation and finally uh, gives the idea uh, how to run kind of real business application. Again, uh, pretty complicated uh, um, data source, I mean, complicated in, in terms of schema. Uh, so there are a bunch of tables that have uh, many relations among them. So it's supposed to be, again, real data analytic application. Uh, so it's industry standard. So it was uh, already implemented for different uh, warehouses and analytical systems. Uh, it provides a wide range of uh, SQL queries that, can, that should be run. Uh, and uh, there are tools to generate data, input data in different formats and of different sizes. Again, this is just a s simplified picture of uh, tables that is used in, the, in this benchmark and how they are related among each other. Most, uh, in two words, there are several really big tables that actually contains all data, uh, like a store sales, store uh, returns, and other table uh, they are much smaller than they mostly used just for join operations. Uh, as I mentioned, so to run this benchmark, we needed to generate input files. Uh, originally, it's developed in a C with a common line tool in a CSV format. Uh, so tool kind of is limited by minimum amount of data in you know, one gigabyte, but also there are some scale factors, 10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, uh, uh, and 1,000 gigabytes. Uh, and uh, there are actually third-party tools that allow to generate data in different formats, like a parquet that we use uh, for our purposes. Uh, almost 100 queries of SQL 99 formats. Mm, so actually, every query answer a real business question. So some query, pretty simple. Other queries, quite complicated. Uh, all queries um, supposed to be kind of templated. So some uh, parameters that are used in query should be substituted kind of in, in the runtime. Uh, so it's supposed to, again, compare the SQL implementation of uh, completeness and performance. And this is just example of query. Uh, this is kind of simple one, but it's a good example because uh, it uh, contains all kind of main data primitives that we have, like a filtering, uh, grouping, and sorting. So also, it's uh, fetch data from three different tables, uh, then join them, and so on. And also, you, you can see in both phone in this SQL query, uh, some parameters, that, as I mentioned, should be templated. Uh, but for simplicity, we can kind of hard code them. Uh, and uh, this is what we actually do for now in, in Beam. So 
some time ago, uh, we developed like a TPCDS ex extension on Beam, and it was uh, improved during the time. So, again, we want just to compare the performance of Beam, well, Beam SQL that we, when we run it on the on the different runners. Uh, and uh, on different environments. And we want to actually maybe to see if there are missing uh, Beam uh, SQL features that's uh, not su supported in Beam. Uh, compare. Also, it should help us to find performance issues in Beam in general, because finally Beam SQL will be translated into uh, Beam tra transforms. Uh, for now, we support, as I mentioned, CSV and Parkit as a type of data source. Uh, poop, poop, runners, we run it on a data flow, Spark and Flink. And uh, unfortunately, only um, one quarter <laughs> of queries actually passing for now. Uh, others are not passing because of mess, mostly because uh, not all uh, SQL syntax is uh, supported by Beam SQL because of different reasons. There are of course, reasons for that. <laughs> so, uh, again, pros and cons. Industry standard, so we can use it for, uh, then uh, after, for example, to compare performance with other systems. And uh, also, it's already, even when we run it kind of on in-house, I would say, so uh, for our, in our company, because initially we wanted like to have some Results In, internally, we found a bunch of different, completely different issues uh, when we run it on, especially when we run it on scale, on different data processing engine. So last year uh, we we did the talk with uh, Ismael uh, about that in more detail. So if you're interested, please take a look. Uh, but at the same time, so it's uh, unfortunately this benchmark is still under de development. So it's uh, well. I highly recommend to do, to take a look on this and probably um, to contribute something. Uh, many queries, unfortunately, as I mentioned, not uh, we cannot run them as it because uh, they're not uh, supported, so we cannot run all queries for now, and uh, only batch mode. Uh, infrastructure. So, a few words about that. Uh, we collect metrics in a, mostly in two different ways. Uh, we use a metrics API for that. Uh, but sometimes for benchmarking, we have a kind of custom collector. So up to you how to do that. But still, uh, me, in my opinion, me, metrics API is a very convenient and good thing to do that. So, And then we, we store our metrics in a uh, metrics database. So it's a big query and influx db so if, uh, after it can be used uh, to create all these charts analysis and so on uh, in, the, in the past we used actually for that perf kit uh, then a while ago uh, we moved to grafana very cool actually tool so to create different dashboards and uh, to combine different uh, graphs uh, and so on so we heavily use it and of course, uh, many things already automated. We run as on Jenkins a bunch of different jobs, in the, uh, also for performance testing and benchmarking. Uh, it's pretty easy actually to do with this nice DSL language that we use uh, to create a configure job for Jenkins. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> sometimes Jenkins even a little bit overloaded, so we should be cautious about creating creating uh, a, new, a new job. And dashboard, Grafana. So as I mentioned, I can say more about that. So I really like it. So uh, we already have a, um, many uh, dashboards that probably can use it. Uh, we don't still use it for 100%. For example, alerting, we, I think we, we don't use it, but we should. And uh, instead of that, actually, we have a custom Python script that uh, runs regularly and uh, it's post results on the on dev mailing list. Uh, well, the goal of this actually to compare the mean value of some metric 
with the mean value on the previous week, and uh, if there is some uh, is there is some regression, so it will be highlighted either in a yellow or in a red. But unfortunately, sometimes it's not it doesn't work really well because, for example, if we have uh, outliers in, in in the metrics, so it will be like a false positive alert. Uh, so we should probably change the logic a bit and probably finally move to Grafana alerts on this. Uh, some conclusions. It's a very crucial to run actually performance testing and, and benchmark because it uh, give you nice errors. Uh, it, it helps us to improve and to make the project better in, in a different way. Java SDK pretty well covered uh, and performance testing, Python, uh, and SDK and Go SDK, unfortunately, missing some, especially to run benchmarks against this SDK. Uh, we don't run actually run regularly test on a real large scale, so which again we should do that because it's in my opinion it's very important. Uh, and uh, am I beam actually in a good shape in terms of? performance testing, but of course there is a still room for improvement. So this is actually the slide, that I, <laughs> main slide of this talk. So uh, please <laughs> take a look at this and, uh, and do your contributions. Actually, there are many things to do. What you want, add uh, like a performance test again for Python SDK and uh, add more runners uh, to run it automatically on Jenkins also to as we do for Spark, uh, Google, uh, Flink, and uh, Dataflow. Uh, automate, oh, this is a, a very cool feature that actually missing. This is a try to find a regressions and why actually it happened uh, automatically with a kind of git bisect. So it should, it, it should really help to detect uh, why actually uh, cause of, of the problem. And uh, personal uh, request just we, we we should make a tpcds benchmark more mature and run it automatically and use it for release testing so some references and uh, actually thank you very much for everybody who contributed to all this type of testing and that we did uh, in beam and benchmarking i can list everybody here so but again thank you very much and thank you very much for your attention thank you